Kia ora. My name is Julia Rose and I'm the Partnerships Manager at the Christchurch Foundation. As you know, our city has a history of fabulous women who have facilitated groundbreaking societal change. So in order to ensure this legacy continues, we want to share our conversations with some of our city's inspiring female leaders. Today, I'm very pleased to welcome Joanna Norris. Kia ora, Jo. Kia ora, Julia. So great to talk to you today. Joanna Hi. is Christchurch New Zealand's Chief Executive, where she's focused on growing our city's reputation as a vibrant and progressive place to work, live and visit. Prior to Christchurch New Zealand, she was the first female editor of the press from 2012 to 2017. And Jo, it's in that role that you did your 2017 TED Talk, where, which is where I want to start today, because even though uh, it's a few years old, what you said couldn't be more relevant for today uh, in a post-terrorist, post-COVID lockdown environment. So in your TED talk, you said, I read blogs of those with whom I wildly disagree. I want to understand their viewpoint. Why? Because they are us. They are New Zealanders. These are the people we work with, we shop with, we ride buses with, and most importantly, we vote with. And until we understand that diversity of viewpoint, we can't possibly hope to understand our community. So they are us, a phrase that would have even more meaning after Christchurch suffers um, the worst terror act in New Zealand's history. So my question to you is, do you think that we're making progress in our inclusivity in our community, whether that's religion, gender or otherwise? Look, it's a really interesting question to reflect on. And, and obviously at the time when uh, I used that phrase, it was in a different context to that that, that we, we now understand um, that phrase to be. But uh, to answer your question, yes, I really do believe we are making progress. We, we have a much greater understanding than we have historically around the value of diversity within our community. And we are increasingly becoming much more open as a nation and as a city. What we've seen in Christchurch over the last decade is a real understanding of the value that a great range of peoples uh, bring to our community. Um, a number of people have joined us from other countries to support the rebuild of Christchurch. And then that phenomenal response, that compassion, that love um, that we showed in response to the mosque attacks, I think continues to reinforce that this is a community that is welcoming, that is open. But we always have more work to do, Julia. We, are, we must never be blind to the fact that there are always people who feel marginalised and we need to support to fully participate in society. That's right. I think as tragic as it was, it did highlight a lot of love, um, which that community have spoken to us about as well. So, um, yeah, there's always some positives to come out as well. Yeah, but it, I think it also highlighted just how marginalised uh, many people within our Muslim community had felt to that point where they had been signalling for some time the risk that was facing the community and unfortunately it took the tragic events of March the 15th to, to really get people to recognise those facts. That's right, that's right. And we've got a long way to go, as you say. You've also said that we're defined by a spirit of exploration and you see that everywhere in Christchurch and it doesn't get better than that. And at the foundation, we certainly agree that we're a, a city of explorers, uh, given that we've led the way with the women's suffragist mo movement as one key example. Uh, how do you define the spirit of exploration in our city? Oh, look, there are so many proof points. That as we've um, really sought to understand our community so that we can help tell the stories at Christchurch NZ and with, with the foundation and with all of our partners, we really started to dig deep into our history and also our current, uh, current situation and our future to understand what it was that started to define us. And there is no one story. We all have different experiences within our city, but at the same time, these common themes kept coming through. A connection to the outdoors, a connection to pushing the status quo, to not accepting things as they are, and um, a real understanding that actually any one of us can make a difference. And we've got over time, over, over history in Christchurch, um, many, many examples of that. Kate Shepherd is an absolutely wonderful one. Uh, Naitahu and the role that um, mana whenua have played in our city is another really beautiful example. Um, we, we, just time and time again, we have these proof points. 
So the spirit of exploration for me is not accepting the status quo, continuing to push from our place, whether it's within our family units, whether it's within our neighbourhoods, or at a city scale. All of us have that within us, and to me, that is the spirit of exploration. I love that. That's like exploring the boundaries of the outdoors, but then within our own limits and what we're trying to achieve in our own lives. So right. it makes it an exciting place to be, I think. It really does, eh? And it, but it also makes it really attainable. Any one of us can make a difference and we choose the sphere that we want to operate within. We don't need to change the world necessarily. We can just enhance our own communities. That's right. Speaking of enhancing our communities, uh, as the CEO of Christchurch New Zealand, you've been tasked with leading the organisation in its goal of igniting bold ambition across Ōtutahi Christchurch. Can you tell us a bit more about what that means to you? Yeah, so we're very clear. We've got a very clear role to play within uh, the city ecosystem and within the community. We are absolutely about transforming people's lives through economic development. So we have a goal that we, all of our activity must lead to sustainable economic development for a more prosperous city. Uh, what that means is in the post-COVID environment that is that we've got three big kind of buckets of activity. The first is uh, supporting an immediate response to COVID and ensuring that we are protecting businesses um, and that we're saving as many jobs as possible. The second phase is a recovery phase where we are really about making sure that we're building a confident city, that we're reigniting a vibrant central city, that we're supporting a regrowth of our visitor economy. And then the third phase is the one that really truly excites me, and that is the repositioning phase as we start to transform our city economy to ensure that we've got the right talent, we've got industry that is growing and supporting prosperity in the city, and that we are shaping ourselves as a smart, sustainable city for the future that really does underpin well-being for the people who live here and future generations. So Three horizons, really clear job to do. Right now, we're all about jobs. That's right. That's definitely a, um, a key important sector for us at the moment, and that's what we're feeling in the community. But I love that you're making Christchurch a really exciting place to be. So thank you for that. Oh, it's great fun. It's such a privilege to work with the communities that we get to work with. Some incredible businesses. Just honestly, they blow me away. Just these homegrown businesses doing really cool, world-beating things. It's, it's just such a cool job. Thank you for sharing your thoughts today, Jo, and your insights about the future of our city. We, we really appreciate talking to you. Well, thank you, Julia, and thank you to the Foundation. Again, really important organisation within our city and making a real difference. Thank you, Jo. Got it.